Friendship with Blood War has officially ended and now I am a minimalist. So today I just wanted to talk about minimalism or more specifically minimalist software and whether it's just a meme or not and whether people actually take it seriously. So let's just start start away with uh, bloatware. So first of all, what is bloatware? Well, it's kind of the opposite of minimalist software. So for example, let's do Microsoft Word would be an example of bloatware because you know, if I wanted to create a document in MS Word, I would have to launch it up, which would take like a couple of seconds just to load a whole bunch of Next.js modules and React Native applications. And then I would get, have to dodge all of these Copilot ads to create a new document. And then I have to click on it. And then I would have to navigate like the 3000 toolbars just to find one single option. You get the point. That's basically what bloatware is. It's software with way too many unnecessary features and way too many complicated ways of doing things and like the opposite of bloatware is called minimalist software for example let's take giraffe which is basically is a sort of uh, uh, alternative to ms word you can put it which instead of you know opening up a program like giraffe you actually just write a text file with whatever text editor you want this is all you do in it title, author, all of that, this is just a test file, and then you can simply compile it to PDF, which is usually what you'll do, so you'll compile it to PDF, test up PDF, and then like you'd open that with another minimalist software called Zathura, which will allow us to literally just view PDFs or other documents, and what do you look at that, now we have our very simple document, and we can do, is, we do it very easily, and a lot more effectively, so that's an example of Bloodware versus minimalist software and today I'm just going to talk about my switch from a whole bunch of bloated software to minimalist software and it, whether it's just a meme or not and how you can switch as well. So let's just start with uh, my terminal emulator which is I'm using ST here and usually your bloated terminal emulator is stuff like an investor is like a bloated terminal emulator or let's say you want Kitty is also a bloat terminal emulator. It takes like two seconds to load up. Wow, that's crazy. And it even depends on system D, it looks like. But uh, ST is suckless symbol terminal. Now, I'm gonna mention suckless a lot in this video. So these are a group of developers who do like development of very simple everyday programs like a terminal emulator, window manager, that are basically for Linux power users, so it's not so everyday, I guess. But uh, these softwares are basically just really minimal. They aren't an alternative to anything. They're just really minimal. And in fact, they're also known for not even having like any configuration file. So if we were to go to my ST build, which is, I just compile it. There is no like installation of ST. I don't download a binary. I just compile it from scratch. And then the only technical configuration file here is called config.h. It's literally just the name of the file that makes it a configuration file config.h everything else about it is basically just a c header file so this is pure c there is no like configuration language it's just c the c programming language is basically what it is and that's how you like change stuff in your terminal or any other circular software and sd is circular symbol terminal now, my build of ST probably has more features than any other terminal out there, like, I don't know, Western, I mentioned that one, or Kiri. That's because I can do stuff like, let's say, increase or decrease my terminal's opacity. What a crazy feature, right? All I could do, like, let me go to my website, and let me go ahead and open this file called index.html. Now, this will have a few uh, links under it, so I can press, instead of, you know, doing it the normie way, which is to find the links I'll do, oh, here's the link that I want, and copy it and paste it in my browser instead of doing that. Uh, there is a dmini script for doing it, so in my build of ST, there is this dmini script which will automatically find all of the URLs, and then it will allow me to follow whatever I want. And dmini is also another circular program, I want to talk about that one as well, it's sort of like a dynamic menu system, so like you can give it input and it will show it as output, so if I do like hello and then I could do uh, good evening and hi and let's just pipe that into the menu and it will you know give us three options here and we can select whatever you want like good evening and it will return that you can use it for writing a whole bunch of shell scripts that's what the menu is 
and then we have a DWM, Suckless Window Manager, which is what you're seeing on screen right now. It's a, a very simple software. Let me go to my build of DWM. Uh, you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff here, but it's also the same exact philosophy where there, if there's no configuration file, the program is better. Now, the reason why that's better is because, let's say you're using i3, which is a window manager with the configuration file, right? Now, the configuration file is obviously going to have a set of options, so you can change this or that in the configuration file if the developer has made an option for it. And usually you'll have a whole bunch of options and you can customize the heck out of it. But let's say when you run out of options and you want to add an extra feature or fix, but there is no option for it. Well, if you're using something with a configuration file, you'd have to ask the developers to add this option. Whereas with a program that doesn't even bother about configuration files, you can just patch it in yourself. So you can just say, oh, I want this feature, then I, or let's say this if statement, then I can basically just add that if statement because this is the C programming language. You can do whatever you want in here. And you can just check my patches directory. So if I were to do ls patches, you can see that all of these are fixes to DWM that people made. And what Circles team does is that they don't apply this to the main build of DWM. The main build of DWM is the stable version that, you know, just works. It's very lightweight, very minimal. And what they do when someone submits a fix like this is that instead of adding it to the actual source code, they just put it up as a patch on their website. So if you actually go to like, I don't know, dwm.suckles.org, I think that's where you, they keep all of the patches. You can see there's like tons of patches here, like about hundreds of two hundreds of patches in this uh, DWM website. And for those who are interested in that fix, they can simply add it. And you can even, you know, manually add patches if you want to. So basically, programs without a configuration file will suck less then the programs with a configuration file is the um, meaning of what I just said there. And all of the Suckless programs will follow this philosophy where there's no configuration file whatsoever. It also does like, you know, very minimal code. So there's like less than 2000 lines of code for DWM. And you can, you know, kind of blow it up if you want to. So, well, bloating, basically I just meant adding more features, like, I don't know, gaps around your windows, and look at this, I can increase my gaps. Can you do that on your window management? Probably not. But uh, that's just the basis of DWM. I just reloaded it, which is also a feature that I've added. Well, technically not added, because all I'm doing is editing xcnit.rc file, and I'm doing, you know, run DWM in a while loop. So every time it gets killed, it will restart DWM. Now, hopefully my recording is still working. If I'm not, I'm going to get mad and I'm going to throw my computer away. But uh, let's move on to uh, hacking on minimal software. Well, let's just do whether it's a meme or not. So, is minimalist software a meme? Absolutely not. There are people who take it seriously like me. And this is the answer to the question. I know that there are some people who consider it a meme. But uh, there's like a very small user base for the software that you probably don't even know about. But you know, they use it very seriously and they use it in the most productive workflow to ever exist. Now let's move on to the fun stuff, which is my builds of this type of software. So first, what sort of software do I use? Well, I use uh, NSXIV as my image viewer that is a terrible name, by the way, sent as the presentation tool. So instead of I don't know, Microsoft PowerPoint. I just do like, hello world. That will be one page in sent. Hello world two will be a second page in sent. And then I can just open that. Look at that, send will automatically convert it to this sort of presentation for me. And I can even convert it to a PDF if I want to. I use Jira, which I talked about in the beginning of this video for articles. So if I go here and do test.ms, let's just do this from scratch. Let's do a title, let's do an author, and the way you do this is with macros, so these are all different macros, and then you do like a NH for a header, so a normal header, and then you do like PP for an indented paragraph, so this is an indented paragraph text, and the next line will not be indented, it's the thing here, and let's do LP. 
and it's going to be non in the paragraph. I don't even care about the, like the spelling. I can type. But uh, now I can just do graph dash ms test ms. By the way, this is just like a text file that you can use in any text editor, and you can use like set on it. So you wouldn't be able to do that with like I don't know Microsoft Word because you know Microsoft Word has its own very binary binary based format. So you can like replace a whole bunch of stuff in here. But let's get into the main business. And you can do dash T and then you can give it a format like postscript or PDF and then you can just redirect the output to test.pdf and then we have the other tool for viewing PDF so actually it's just a whole bunch of documents called Zathura and they will allow us to view a lot of documents it's actually very modular so if we were to do uh, XPBS query uh, yeah, the avoid Linux package manager kind of sucks. You have a whole bunch of long commands. But you can see that I have the Zatura package, but I also have Zatura PDF popular. Now, Zatura itself can do absolutely nothing. It can't even view documents. So you have to sort of install modules for it. That's how minimal it is. So install the PDF popular. And you could do something like Zatura deja vu to view uh, deja vu files and so on. And that's basically how you use Zathura. You can do like your Vim bindings plus and minus to zoom out and zoom in equals to set it to a, you know, like normal zoom. And you can use your HJK and now to do stuff like that. You can press F to open links, but right now there's no links in here and that's Zathura. So what else do we have to talk about? Well, probably D menu is the biggest one. So I already did a brief introduction of that, but let's just go to my scripts, okay? And let's run the script called emoji. Let's just open it. And let me just, you know, make things a little more readable here. But basically what the script is doing is that it's using D menu to say, uh, pick an emoji. Let me just get rid of that. I don't know. But it's basically saying if it doesn't, if it just cats out this file, so we'll go down local Noah. Emoji, which is just a whole bunch of emojis and descriptions, and it will pipe that into D menu. So it's going to get input from this file, and then the output is going to be this nice little menu with D menu, and it's going to say pick an emoji, and I can do the font, and then I can just exit it if it doesn't work, and then the emoji is going to be the selection, but you know, we don't want the description with it. So we can use awk to print the first field, which is just the emoji. Again, if it fails, we will exit. And then we'll say the emoji will be copied to the clipboard. And then we'll do uh, add it to our insert, add it to our text field as well. So if you're typing, we should be able to, you know, uh, insert it. So you can see that the lemon got automatically inserted. And that's basically what this script is about. And I have a whole bunch of D-menu scripts like this that do tiny little tasks and they are very useful. And there's also like a, all, uh, I don't know what to call it, but it's like global hotkeys. And we can do key codes in here as well. So my last video was about key codes, which is when you have a key binding and then sub key bindings from it. Well, SXHKD or the Simlex hotkey daemon, that's also a terrible name, is for adding, you know, global key codes to or global key bindings to any X window manager, X sort window manager. So it doesn't matter which one you're using. Very easy syntax, just works. So if I were to do super Y and then C, that would actually bring me my uh, clipboard or super Y and then let's just do like Z. That should run ST dash E ZSH or that doesn't work. Or super control F should launch my file manager called uh, LF or if I were to do super Y and then U that should bring up this Unicode picker and so on. So that's what D menu and SXHKD symbol as hockey daemon does. And that's just going to be it for this video. I can't remember a whole bunch of other stuff. Well actually let's also talk about Pywall so this is getting quite long but Pywall is what I'm using to generate the color scheme that you're seeing on screen right now. So if I just run the script, that's another script by the way. It will show my color scheme. This is generated from my uh, wallpaper using Pywall and it can be applied. So if we were to bring up my wallpaper picker and let's just pick another wallpaper like this one. Then you can see that all of my colors have now changed to use that one from Pywall. So this is actually a really nice one. I kind of like it. 
but what Pavel does is generate the color schemes and then you can like add in a patch for X resources in your DWM and ST build and use you know color color 0 to col through color 15 and that's going to override your color variables it's kind of hard to explain but the X resource patch will read from dot cache will actually just read from your XLDB which is like the X resources database I think that's what it stands for but in here Pywell will automatically run XLDB dash merge on this template called colors dot X resources I think that's what it's called colors well dot uh, dot x resources like that and it will basically merge that and give us this color scheme so you just need to do that x resource patch to you know get these colors dynamically change it and i even did my own little patch to reload dwm without quitting it so you can you know reload dwm's colors like super control z will reload all of the colors without you even knowing so that's why the colors are going to change really really quickly so you can see that there's no like recompilation happening here. I'm not recompiling DWM. It just changes the colors and that's going to be it for the video. This is the actual end. Anyways, bye bye. See you later.